Two days ago, I was out in Lincoln, Nebraska, and I met with Ron, who is the founder of PRI, and the neurological optometrist, uh, Dr. Wise, and I met with them for a reason because I discovered uh, not too long ago that if my right eye is open or if both eyes are open and I move my eyes to the right, my back tightens up and I'm just portraying, I'm just, I can do it through a standing reach test where you try to touch your toes. Well, just by doing that, moving my eyes to the right, I tighten up. I, I won't touch my toes. But then if I move my eyes to the left, I can touch the floor. So I lose range of motion. My, ba my body creates tension as I move my eyes to the right, that which seems strange. So I just kept testing it and it kept, didn't matter whether I was walking, standing still, running, didn't matter. If my eyes moved right, I would tighten up. If they moved left, I would relax. Uh, and then I realized uh, this little annoying ache that I've had, uh, it's a dull ache in the left SI joint. If I had something in my right visual field, whether it was a computer screen, a TV, uh, a book, and my eyes were looking right, my back would ache. If I moved that screen or that book to the left, the pain would go away within a few seconds. So I finally said, you know, this is not normal, which I knew was not normal. And this is not, and I know from PRI Vision, because uh, I took that seminar twice, that if something is a visual issue, and when I say visual, I don't mean it's really an eye issue. It is a brain, this is a little brain, little purple spongy brain that you can squeeze and get yourself neutral with. Don't ask, just, it can happen. Uh, it is a brain issue. It is what your brain is perceiving of the external world or not perceiving of the external world. I know that if your brain is not perceiving space correctly, whether it's the space out to the sides of you, the space in front of you, or the floor underneath you, the ground underneath you, or the ground at mouth level, teeth, if any of those things are not being sensed correctly, it will cause you to pattern even more strongly. And nothing you do, I don't care how many rib cages you expand, how many times you try to get into left AFIR, how many you know, hamstring exercises you do, adductor, glute max, nothing you do will overcome that issue if it's there. Luckily, most people don't have that issue. They don't have this extenuating dental or visual brain or even feet issue. In my life, I've had all three. And ironically enough, I said, yeah, I have the foot issue. I had a teeth issue, a dental issue. Well, at least I didn't have the visual issue. And ironically, again, like I said, I did. And I think that was the origin of everything that occurred to me through life. So what I discovered when I went out there, and I already knew, sums up with my right eye. I'm either overusing it or underusing my left eye. So I, already, I knew what was going on. I just don't know exactly the exact details of it and what can be done about it. So I went out there and it turns out that my brain is suppressing my left eye. It's just not using it. And it's developmental. It must have occurred because of the numbers, because of my eye exam numbers, uh, I was told that this is something that had to have occurred early in life, so it was developmental when I was a child, which makes perfect sense in my life. And it was interesting that she said that she was shocked that I went 41 years without getting glasses. And again, it turns out that for whatever reason, I was essentially living with double vision. Now, without actually seeing double vision, because what your brain does, if there is a double vision, so your left eye and your right eye, and I'm pretty sure I got this correct. I might have some of the details. I'm not an eye doctor, but I think I have it correct. Your left eye and your right eye, they present two different images to your brain and then your brain combines those two different images into one image and that's what you're seeing, okay? However, if those two images are too dissimilar and they can't be rectified, they can't be combined easily, you're gonna have double vision. You're gonna see two different Im images. So your brain instead eliminates one of those images. It basically chooses an eye and my brain shows the right side and it shows to suppress the left side. Now, you might think that's kind of weird, but if you just close your eyes, you can just close your eyes right now, 
Now just open your right eye and look around. You can see quite a lot. The only thing you can't see without turning your head is your left peripheral vision. But you, can, you have a pretty good visual field just with one eye. And that's essentially what I was doing, either completely or partially, I don't know, because I've done some research on it, and apparently you can suppress the complete eye or just part, part of it. I don't know which one. I'm probably suppressed the whole thing, that's what I would assume, because of what happened to me. Uh, like how my body responded, um, not in a good way. Uh, so that's what was going on. And she was actually surprised. She said anyone who comes into her clinic with those presentations, how my eyes measured out, uh, would probably a not be a non-functioning human being. Uh, however, because I've been doing PRI exercises for six years straight, every day, uh, you know, it was enough to, even though I couldn't overcome my visual system, brain, it was enough to keep me to keep me functioning. Uh, but she doesn't know, because she didn't know me before PRI, she never saw that picture of my body all distorted that I have in one of my videos about the lateral pelvic tilt and the QL. She didn't know that I was at my wit's end. She didn't know that I was, had gone through years and years and years. I was basically dysfunctional throughout my whole 20s and early 30s. I did not have any control of my body, because my body, I wasn't in control of my body. My right freaking eye was in charge of my body. And so not only do we have this right side pattern that is normal, I then, on top of it, had a right visual field that was being used so much that the left eye couldn't be, that the left side of the world couldn't be sensed. So I couldn't get to the left appropriately. Now, through all my exercises, I could, but it wouldn't stick. And that's what can happen sometimes when you have a sensory issue. The sensory input from my right eye it's not a surprise that my crossbite occurred on my right, on my right teeth. Uh, it's not a surprise that I, my right foot was very supinated, but so was my left. But either way, right, 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 right. It is what your brain senses or does not sense. It's what you can feel or what you cannot feel. It is not about hamstrings and adductors. It is because those muscles move us but it is a brain issue. It is what your brain, what you as a human can feel or not feel. A lateral pelvic tilt is not a pelvis issue. Obviously your pelvis is tilted. It is a brain issue. It is what your brain is sensing or not sensing, which activates the muscles inappropriately or appropriately. And that is my message for anyone who is studying PRI, AKA, how the human body actually exists in our environment and stabilizes and breathes and moves. That's all it is. It's not a, a, it's PRI is not a method. It's not a technique. It is accurately describing how humans actually exist in this world. If you found this video interesting or helpful, could you please like it, share it, subscribe to the channel, uh, do anything you can to spread this information because PRI is really changing people's lives and I hope to share it with even more people. Thanks.